Welcome everyone to the three-digit World Cup winners quarterfinals match between Taiwan and Japan. I am Dio and I will be your commentator for this match. This is a matchup between the first seed and ninth seed out of qualifiers for the tournament. Taiwan coming off of a very dominant 6-1 win versus Australia last weekend. They basically had multiple full combos on every single map, or at least one full combo on every single map, and only lost... Uh, a single double time pick versus Australia's roster. Um, that was the one map where they had uh, quite a few scores below 800k. Most of the other maps they had you know, at least two people above that mark and only had one on that pick. So if there is a skill where this team may be a little bit lacking, it is probably in the double time, probably in the speed category. Um, and Japan may be able to take advantage of that with players like Haga on their team. Japan, of course, had their tiebreaker matchup versus Sweden last weekend. They had a pretty tough time with actually eking out the win in that matchup. Um, of course, they are the ninth seed versus the eighth seed, so it is expected that that match is very, very close between the two of them. And close it was, they were basically trading points back and forth throughout most of the match with the picks uh, sort of going in one team's favor for a while and then another team's favor in a while. Japan winning a lot of the picks early on and Sweden almost able to stage a comeback but losing it in tiebreaker. Um, looking at some of the scores for Japan, however, on the same map that Taiwan actually lost versus Australia, uh, Japan it didn't really have uh, a lot of any better scores. In fact, uh, Taiwan's team score was a little bit higher than Japan's by a, a pretty small margin. So I'm looking for... You have to look for sort of a, a little bit of a pop-off from Japan to come through. You have to look for sort of some of their players to perform very, very well. Uh, Iger in their last match had a very, very strong showing on maps like Nosenki uh, in the Nomad alt pick, uh, quite literally double Sing that map. Uh, you should maybe play into whoever is playing well on the day and hope that they do not double or triple full combo maps like they were in their previous match. Um, that's never the best strategy, but it might just be what you have to do in a matchup like this where you are you know, a mid seed against the top seed in the tournament. It's never a matchup that you are expected to win. That's Iger still actually full comboing this. Uh, yeah, that might be the player you pick into if you are Japan. Uh, looking at uh, you know, the, the same person who double S'd the Nomad alt map last weekend, had the highest score on the tiebreaker versus Sweden, and uh, in general was just playing very, very well. Maybe you lean into somebody like that who uh, might be able to put on a carry performance. quite a lot of pop-ups from multiple players last week on the side of uh, Team Japan. Also as well having a pretty good performance on a lot of the speed maps. Um, unfortunately unable to actually close out a win on the first pick from Team Sweden, which was that same map that Taiwan lost against Australia, Goha Mold Okazu. But 
for the side of Taiwan, you've got a lot of players who are pretty renowned for very, very strong consistency or very, very strong performance on really weird maps. Uh, players like Shield, for instance, Flask, uh, GFMRT, who are all uh, all sort of fit that bill, at least to a, a small degree. Riser as well is a very, very strong player who's been around for quite some time. Zane uh, is a player I think who most people, especially after last year's Kanyo Cup, definitely are very aware of in tournament play as somebody who can pull out very, very strong performances, uh, specifically on raw mechanics maps and speed maps. Players in the warm-ups here coordinating a little bit of uh, mouth versus tablet action rather than country versus country action. Hoping for Shield and Haga to switch spots so that they uh, can actually do so. Sounds like a very similar song to sort of the tiebreaker from last week. Uh, sort of a light tech consistency map is what we had last week as the tiebreaker. And we can talk a little bit about the map pool now uh, as the teams are still just sort of going through warm ups, having a little bit of fun here. Hidden for Haga and GFMRT. By the way, if you're looking for a skill that Taiwan had a rough time with in qualifiers, definitely Nomad 1, Nomad 2. Uh, Japan just barely placing above them on Nomad 1 by a little bit more than a thousand points. Uh, but definitely not having as good of a time on Nomad 2. Um, and pretty much every other pick, I mean, Taiwan is right up at the top. Uh, it's, it's slightly aim consistency hidden. It's sli or slightly inconsistency no mod, it's slightly low AR hidden, uh, or rather aim hidden. And that's about the only places where Taiwan and Japan are close. DT2 was fairly close between them as well, less than 50k score difference between the two teams on that one. Uh, but it is a very, very Taiwan favored matchup. Uh, it would be difficult to say otherwise with them being the number one seed out of qualifiers, beating out even the United States roster in qualifiers for this tournament. Last week's map pool, where we saw Taiwan do very, very strongly against Australia. Uh, having a pretty similar format overall to the map pool here, you have obviously the very, very standard and mostly unchanging Nomad pool. Uh, there are some slight differences with No Sanku being much more focused on uh, sort of your older standard style alt maps where they've got a lot of flow aim, a lot of slider control mixed into the map at the same time. Uh, this one, one of those new age Sukunathan Zutamayo maps where there's quite a lot of snap aim built into the map and a lot of uh, finger control and slider control built into one section. 
Nomon 6 is definitely a little bit different from Crash Mind. It's a little bit less of a reading map and more of a finger control death map. Uh, Sputnik 4 by 2L. The same artist who has been used quite a lot in the tournament scene recently for Nomad 6 maps that focus very heavily on complex variable rhythms throughout the map. Um, so that is a map that is going to be very, very different from last week. In one, mostly the same. It's still an awkward aim map. There's not a lot to say about that one. Uh, Hidden 2, still a stream map, but definitely less tech focused, I would say, than last week. Uh, Devious Panda's Extravaganza difficulty on Ukiyo-e Yokosho. Uh, much more sort of just raw stream aim focused rather than uh, any of the tech focus that was had last week. Our drop, we have a little bit higher circle size in the control pick as well with Pomuda's uh, Eagle uh, D map set of Eagle. Uh, Pomuda's map set of D by Eagle. Having uh, CS 5.85 instead of CS 5.2 on the Hard Rock 2 pick from last weekend. So it is going to be a little bit more difficult to keep the aim control together uh, but it is lower star rating as well so much higher focus on the actual finger control reading and uh, attack portions of the map uh, double time pool is very very high bpm this weekend 240 bpm is not the regular bpm for double time one it is actually 270 throughout most of the map so all of these picks are very very high bpm except for noblesse gloria uh, which is 228 bpm streams throughout the map um, much higher BPM overall than last weekend's double time pool. Uh, last weekend we did have a higher BPM cap in DT3 with Gohan Maokazu at 285 BPM, but uh, the other picks were all below 260, so a very, very different double time pool this weekend. And as for the rest of the maps, uh, Free Mod 1 is definitely still mostly aim focused with a bit of control uh it's an usao map with a light tech light tech slider aim sort of map essentially uh last weekend's very very awkward aim focused and honestly i think one of the easier maps in the pool i'm not sure how this one compares to that i feel like it is going to be much harder um even with the approach rate being a little bit higher uh, Glorious Crown in free mod is a very fun stream pick for a lot of players, and I think much less awkward than Tuar by Renard from last week. Uh, Identity Part 3 and Lunatic Cure is very, very different maps. Uh, and the tiebreaker this week, again, very similar to last weekend. We have sort of this light tech consistency map that is a, sort of a test of all different skills at the same time. We are into the bans now. It is Nomad 4 being banned out at first by Taiwan. That is the tech map in Nomad. Very, very slider aim focused sort of map. Japan's first ban being a Nomad 2 Legend of Millennium, the uh, raw stream sam the map. And Nomad Forfic is uh, definitely an interesting one. It's very, very just fully slider focused. Uh -huh. And there's not a lot else going on in the map. So it does exactly what you want it to, even though it is a, a bit unconventional as a map overall.
last band that we have is going to be Hidden One. That is the awkward aim map in Hidden being banned out by Japan. That's a sort of interesting combination of bands with both teams banning Hidden, actually. So neither team wanting to dip into that mod pool at all. Uh, a little bit interesting there. When you get Lunatic Tears as the first map up. This is going to be a little bit of an interesting pick, I think. I don't know that either of the teams actually played the low AR free mod pick last weekend. No, I don't believe either of them did. Uh, Taiwan definitely did not, and I don't think I saw it in the... Oh no, Japan did play... Uh... Identity Part 3. They, that is a pick that they lost uh, versus Sweden last weekend. Uh, essentially, the difference being the no mod player between the two teams. A little bit of difference between the modded players, but only 30k or so there. Um, but hidden player for Japan, unable to make up the difference from the hidden FC from Sweden, and then the Nomad player from Japan FCing, but the Nomad player from Sweden getting still 700k, so a pretty big score difference there. I'm kind of interested to see exactly how this goes, especially with Japan having fairly good scores on the hidden map pool in general from qualifiers they had a very very good score on hidden too but that was not the ar8 map in qualifiers that was nothing but theory so the stream aim pick um and on the on the actual low ar pick it was still taiwan with about 300k score lead on them from qualifiers but we'll see how this first pick goes this is the first pick from japan in a Lunatic Tears, you obviously have to be confident on something to go with the first pick. Double Hard Rock from Iger and Quadruple Hyphen. Riser with Hidden Hard Rock, Zane with Hard Rock, and Flask with no mod over on the side of Taiwan. Early, early break from Delis over on the side of Japan. Uh, same for Flask on the Nomad. Both Nomad players actually finding the first break for either team. And at the exact same point, so it is a complete wash. Just the accuracy right now in Japan's favor. Quadruple hyphen with the double F on Hard Rock. I go with a miss-aim though on Hard Rock. Does drop the combo and give that over to one of the Hard Rock players on Taiwan. Riser with a slider break during the Kiai, but Iger also finds a couple of misses now right afterwards. So the combos reset for both teams. It just ends up with about a 70k score lead in the favor of Taiwan from the combo advantage. 
uh, given over by Iger's earlier break. Pretty much similar combos now though, Delis and Flask still matching each other on the no mods, quadruple hyphen and Zane still matching on the hard rocks. Better accuracy for Delis, better accuracy for Zane on the no mods and hard rocks, so uh, combo very much so a wash right now. And it's just gonna come down to honestly whoever breaks next, where that combo goes. Uh, with the accuracy being so close and with Riser ever so slowly eking out more and more score lead for Taiwan. And not only a percent and a half accuracy up on Iger, but also about 30 combo or so ahead of his Japanese counterpart on Hard Rock only. And there's a miss for Riser, so now Iger ha does have a combo lead for Japan at the moment. About a 350 or so combo lead to work with. Yeah, even with that percent accuracy down, is going to be able to probably swing the score lead back in their favor. They just have to be able to hold for the rest of the map, and it should go over by the end of the pick. Uh, there's not a lot of time left, though, and Delis finds a miss on the Nomad. Flask continues holding the combo, Zane as well. Still holding strong for Taiwan, and that is just disaster for Japan, honestly. They almost were able to bring it back, but Delis and Quadruple Hyphen miss at the end of the map, where Flask and Zane have the consistency to end the map strongly, except for they both miss at the end of the very last stream. But it doesn't matter, because they got the win anyway. So, very nice break point for Taiwan. They were able to... Uh, Take out the win with a little bit higher consistently or consistency, excuse me, through the ending of the map, or almost through the ending of the map. Uh, unfortunately for Delis and Quadruple Hyphen, they do break a little bit earlier than both of their Taiwanese counterparts who were holding combo through most of the map. First pick for Taiwan is going to be double time two. This is the 228 BPM stream pick in DT. map very much so a left hand map if you don't know what that means it's basically just all focused on tapping there is not very much aim requirement in this pick whatsoever uh, that is why the star rating is going to be a little bit lower than average uh, obviously after double time i'm talking about uh, 4.4 stars is the no mod star rating here after dt this map is 6.2 stars which is still a good over half a star rating lower than the Nomad 1 pick for this map pool. So very, very focused on just how well you can stream this BPM rather than uh, any aim requirement whatsoever in the map. Map Shield, Riser, Zane, the roster for Taiwan, Dallas, Haga, and Kong Kong Kinakon, the roster for Japan. A few swaps for both of these teams where they are they're just swapping in their best speed players here. Zane with a couple of early misses, uh, kind of unexpected, honestly, from me. Um, Haga as well, finding a couple of uh, just an early slider break there. They're definitely not the players that I expected to miss on this. 
Dell is finding an early miss as well. So now it's Shield and Riser with good combos. Aga finding uh, another break uh, for Japan also. Uh, so very, very big combo lead over on the side of Taiwan. Only Kung Kung Tinikon holding on to the combo for uh, Japan. With Zane finding the combo break, it is Delis and Haga holding on to a little bit higher combo than just Zane. But with Shield and Riser still double full comboing, that score lead really is just not moving at all. Really nicely done from everybody hitting that section, actually. Very, very good accuracy on both Shield and Riser's full combos, by the way. 99.7 and 99.75 on their full combos, respectively. Delos and Kung Kung Kinecon, a little bit lagging behind in the accuracy, but Haga with 99% able to more than match Zane's accuracy. It's just unfortunate that the rest of Japan actually can't keep up with the accuracy, but that might not matter. Shield finds a combo break, and that's one of the FTs gone for Taiwan here at the end of the map. Zane breaks as well. Kunko Kinikon breaks. Is it going to go over to Japan? It's going to be really close, but I don't know if just Delis and Haga are enough to beat out the full combo from Riser. Is there enough combo left in the map? The accuracy might actually make the difference in a miss from Haga at the end of the map will seal it up in favor of Taiwan. I don't think that miss alone was enough to take the score down 30k. You would have to watch the VOD back. Uh, but that is very, very close. I think it mostly comes down to the early misses from Haga and Delis at the start of the map and the accuracy difference between these players. Three 100s for Riser on the full combo. Six 100s, 150 for Shield on the one slider break. Uh, those are ridiculous accuracies on a map where everyone else is in the 98s. And it really does give them the score difference that they needed. Less than 30k on the margin of victory for Taiwan's first pick. If you are Japan looking at what happened on that map, you may actually just want to pick into one of the other double time maps. Uh, Nomad 5 also open and the most similar in BPM uh, to the map that you just played at 235. So definitely all options. Glorious Crown as well. It's going to be a very, very similar pick, but they go with Hard Rock 3 actually. Nightbird Lost Wing mapped by Apafi. This is the CS 6.5 Precision Hard Rock pick in the map pool. Not only a lot of aim control with the Precision being a pretty big factor in the map, only circle size 6.5, very, very high CS for a hard drop pick. But also with a lot of the patterning in the map being really, really focused around sometimes the finger control with the 1-6 burst and sometimes the aim control 
uh, with both the streams and the jumps in this map. Waiting on the roster swaps for both teams to come through. Looks like we have Last and Riser coming in for this one. Riser staying in from the last map. Iger coming in now for Japan. Coming back in after playing Hard Rock on a Lunatic Tears. You expect Quadruple Hyphen in for this one as well. Eric, the last one for the side of Japan. The first time we're seeing them this match. And Zane going to round out the roster for Taiwan, as he's done for two picks in a row now. No combo breaks from anyone so far. Quadruple hype and finding the first there. Flask as well following up right before the uh, spinner. We are over halfway through the map and still two full combos to two for both teams. Better accuracy for Quadruple hype and over on Japan. But overall better accuracy for Taiwan with Riser and Zane matching or doing better than the accuracy from Quadruple hype and, and far better accuracy than either Iger or Aerith. Aerith and Zane both break, Riser breaks, Flask breaks, that's a three-way reset coming through for Taiwan and Japan. Finally, with a decisive combo advantage, Iger actually drops it at the very end of the map on that last stream, but Quadruple Hyphen is there to back him up, holds on to the combo through the stream alongside Aerith, and that is going to give them their first point in this matchup. The three-way break comes through for Taiwan at the end of the map, and that's really what Japan needed. They can't seem to find the full combos this match, but they are able to take that point regardless with the 800k plus from Iger and Aerith and Quadruple Hyphen, both 600k plus on the back end. Really nicely done from them. That does bring us to the next pick from Taiwan. They went with the first pick on speed, but only won it by 30k. Uh, so you have to be a little bit hesitant about picking speed, raw speed at least, again, into a team that just lost by only 30k to your first pick. Uh, Japan, though, sticking with the same strategy, two picks in a row, going with the high circle size in free mod and the high circle size in hard rock, and it paying dividends on the second pick. Taiwan maybe just follows the same strategy regardless, just goes with the thing that they're comfortable with, the thing that they planned on from the start of the match. Sometimes that second guessing can actually mess with your strategy and make it so that you miss pick. But they're going to go with Fremont too, and that is the same strategy essentially. 
225 BPM on the streams in this one, 228 BPM on the streams in No Bluffs Gloria. Very, very similar BPMs and very, very similar style of map overall. This map, however, with quite a lot of one-thirds near the end of it. Um, I don't know if on this difficulty they are active one-thirds, but I know that there are quite a lot of one-thirds near the end, and I assume them to be active because it is a whole section of the song that lends itself. Roster swaps coming in for both teams, it looks like, with everybody swapping out at the moment. Uh, Dallas, the, Dallas and Flask apparently the only ones left in the no lobby right now. I would not be surprised to see the same roster from Noblesse Gloria and from both teams. But it looks like Dazzlewind is going to be subbing in for Shield on this one for Taiwan. And Aerith is going to be subbing in for Dallas on the side of Japan. Other than that, the roster is both the same for this one. And uh, apparently Taiwan is uh, facing an earthquake, so... We're going to wait for that to be over. So it does not look like a very severe earthquake, only around magnitude between 4 and 5, uh, which is still definitely very feelable. Uh, you are going to feel an earthquake like that, but it is not going to be uh, ridiculously damaging to a lot of people. It is actually a very long earthquake. They are not typically 30 seconds or longer, so it is a, a little bit interesting. But it looks like Taiwan is now ready to go. Uh, earthquake is apparently over for them. And clearly none of the players for this map are injured. Hopefully none of the players on the team are injured. And hopefully none of the people in Taiwan are injured in general. Back to Osu, we do see Hidden Hard Rock for Dazzlewind, Hard Rock for Zane, Hidden Hard Rock for Kung Fu Pinacon, and Hidden for Haga. We do see breaks from Zane and Haga on this map early on, matching breaks at the same point once again for both of these teams. Uh, we do see very, very good accuracy from Riser on this map, but overall better accuracy from Japan this time around. We have a consistent 97-98 across the team. And apparently Taiwan is having another Earthquake, but the players don't seem to care because they're all still comboing through the Earthquake. Haga is the one to break, actually, on the Hidden through the active one-thirds. Aerith, as well, finds a break, and none of the players from Taiwan have broken 
on this map since the very beginning with Zane's early miss that matched Haga's. Kong Kong Kinikon still has the hidden hard rock full combo, but the breaks need to come through all across the board for Taiwan at this point for that FC to matter. And it doesn't look like it's going to be happening anytime soon. All of the players here still looking very, very strong, and there is no longer a way that Kong Kong Kinikon can bring it back. That's a win for Taiwan on their second pick. Really nicely done. Still two full combos from Downwind and Riser. And they are able to finish it out this time. You ever just hidden hard rock full combo a six star map during an earthquake? So, uh, you know, I'm not sure how to commentate this one. I don't think I've ever commentated an Earthquake match before. <laughs> it's, uh... Yeah, anyway, they, they double full comboed during an Earthquake. Zane just missing at the very start before it even started. Um, so they're, they're doing pretty well right now, honestly, for the roster from Taiwan. 3-1 to one up against Japan. Their strategy of just picking speed streams is working so far. Uh, they may or may not go for something like the Breakcore Nomad 5 as their next pick, or just go for one of the other double-time picks. I could see something like uh, Base Drop Peaks being fine for them, since that is a uh, very, very high-speed focus sort of map. Uh, picks for Japan... There's not any high circle size left. They're actually going to go with Nomad 6, Sputnik 4 getting picked up now. Yeah, and uh, for those wondering, that was a magnitude 5.8 earthquake that occurred uh, apparently about 20 kilometers southwest of Hualien County Hall in Taiwan. Uh, occurred on the east coast of the island, right about middle of the island or so, uh, pretty much directly along the fault line that lies right below. So they... Probably definitely felt that one. That was a much stronger earthquake than uh, the one that preceded it. Yeah, it was actually a stronger earthquake than the ones that were before it. Um, a lot of times there will be one that occurs that is much deeper before the top part actually shifts, and that's what happened here. The first one was at a depth of 35 kilometers, this one at a depth of 15 kilometers. I'm not sure if there's actually gonna be another one that happens. Um, there can be thirds, especially after a highest intensity intensity earthquake. At least I hope that was the highest intensity one that's going to happen.
Um, luckily, all the players are still fine to keep going, and uh, we will be getting into Nomad 6. This is the Variable Rhythms gimmick map in Nomad. This is a pick where we are not going to be seeing very good accuracy, I don't believe. The FMRT currently the best accuracy at 95-96%, in Japan entirely below 94 at the moment. Actually, everybody besides the FMRT at 94 or below, and now everyone is at 94 or below. Now let's find the first miss, though, over on the side of Team Japan. This is their third pick, and... Let's give over that first combo break. There's quite a lot of map left to go still, but we are entering a slow section, and this is going to be a little bit of free combo for Team Taiwan. Iger as well, missing at the end of that longer section. And it's just Hyphen now with the combo for Japan. Shield, JF, MRT, and Flask still holding the three-way halfway through. Shield has 95% accuracy, by the way. That is a miss from Hyphen. That is the last full combo gone from Team Japan. Iger does have a pretty good combo, but it is still a three-way FC from Taiwan on this map. Shield with the 95% accuracy, uh, very much higher than anyone else in the lobby at this time. Really strong score from him, but the three-way from Taiwan is really, really strong on this one. Very nicely done from them. It is over double the team score from Japan, actually, and that is Japan's pick as well. So that is a that is a heck of a performance from Team Taiwan. The Earthquake FC into the three-way FC after the next pick from Japan comes through. It's a little bit unfortunate, Iger and Dallas missing in the middle of the map, but with the accuracy from Shield, I don't think that it would have mattered even if they three-way full comboed. Uh, they probably still would have lost that pick regardless. I feel like if you're Taiwan, you can just keep picking speed. They're gonna do that. DT1, now the next pick. This isn't exactly a speed map, though. This is the aim and double time pick. High AR. AR 10.2, I believe. Uh, it's 270 BPM jumps. That's it. That's the whole map. Not a lot else to say. There's some bursts here and there, but other than that, it is uh, really just an AR 10.2 double time test and 270 BPM jumps all the way through. Your aim isn't very good if your high BPM aim is not very good or if you cannot burst 270, 
you won't be able to play the mechanics parts, and if you can't read high AR, you will not be able to play the reading parts of the map. So you won't be able to read what's actually coming in the map. And there was actually another uh, earthquake in uh, Taiwan, by the way. Um, 26 occurring right on top of 25. This was a magnitude 6.2 earthquake with a depth of 14 kilometers. So they are actually still getting stronger right now. Um, that is half a magnitude higher than the 5.8 magnitude earthquake that occurred during Fremod 2. went and checked the government website again because I was curious and sure enough there is a uh, there is another earthquake that occurred right on top of the other one actually one kilometer farther away from Hualien County Hall Yeah, it seems like this fault line in general is moving quite a lot right now, so they may actually be dealing with these for a little while. Um, Everyone into the map now, though. AR 10.2, 270 BPM double time pick on the way. Early miss from Dallas. Nobody else dropping the combo. Haga actually dropping the combo at the very start of the map. Everybody else on 52 combo. Everybody from Taiwan still holding on to the full combos. It's just the early breaks from Haga and Dallas over on Japan as well. So everybody holding strong on the combos here so far. Still no misses. Riser actually finding a miss there, and Japan now with the combo advantage, big combo lead for their side. Because everybody is still holding on. That's the only miss that's happened through the entire map. Dazzlewind is now missing right after the spinner, and that is big combo for Japan at this point. And Zane missing at the ending as well. I feel like, is there another earthquake going on, actually? Okay, there's not one listed, but still a little bit ridiculous that even uh, even during all this, they're still getting scores like this. Haga 
gonna finish it off for Team Japan, despite the early slider break, is still almost gonna get 1.2 million score just from the accuracy. Five 100s on that map, four 100s for Zayn as well, and three 100s for Riser. Uh, really, really strong accuracy overall. Dallas as well, you know, six misses, but seven 100s on that map. Uh, but Japan overall, just better combo through the ending of the map. Riser, Dazzlewind, and Zane all breaking in order. Kind of killed the score for Taiwan, and Japan was able to take advantage. Not seem like there was another earthquake, so I'm assuming that was just regular shakes from Zayn instead of earthquake shakes. Next pick over to Japan, they did win the high AR double time aim map. You maybe go into another aim pick or you go into hidden three. All right. So this is completely different from anything else we've done so far. Uh, Lunatic Tears and Free Mod is the closest thing because it's also low AR, um, but it doesn't force low AR on everyone. And two players on each team took some variation of hard rock on Free Mod 3. So this is a very, very different Force mod, forced AR8 hidden pick from anything else that we've had so far in this matchup. All right, looks like we've got the lineup for both teams. GFMRT, Dazzlewind, and Flask in for Taiwan, hoping to take the break point off of Japan's fourth pick. Dallas, Kung Kung Kinikon, and Hyphen are gonna try to win this one for the team. Make sure that they do not get down the match point here. They break from Dallas on this map for Japan. Hyphen as well, finding an early break. So it's just Kong Kong Kinekon with the FC for Team Japan. And Taiwan holding the three-way at the start of the map. Oh, 
combo disadvantage not big for Japan. It is less than 200 cumulative combo. And uh, that is uh, made up for now with Dazzlewind having broken. So still very, very close between the two teams. Accuracy roughly similar as well, a 98, high 98, to a couple of 96s, 95s. We are already, already halfway through this map, by the way. Kong Kong, Kinikon, Flask, and GFMRT are full comboing, but Dallas and Hyphen are very close to FC, and it's making up for the extra full combo from Taiwan with Dazzlewind having broken later on into the map. The score still very, very close, if not edging its way back and forth just because of accuracy right now. Anybody breaking on the streams, Flask drops a lot of accuracy, and it actually is enough to give the score over. Flask breaking at the end of it as well. Are those Earthquake Shakes or are those regular Shakes at the end of the map that actually gave the score over to Japan? He was shaking off a couple of streams there near the end of it. And the FC from Kong Kong Kinikon with 99 Act doing a lot of work for Japan. Delis and Hyphen with very, very good supporting scores as well. Uh, both up on score over their counterparts. So a win across the board for Japan. Uh, kind of unfortunate from Flask, dropping so much accuracy and a miss at the end of the map. Uh, but that is going to give the fourth pick for Japan over to the team that picked the map. And Nomad 5 going to be the next pick for Taiwan. They're just on the speed train and not giving up. They know that they lost that DT1 pick, so they're going with something a little more burst-focused, things that worked for them in the first two picks. This is the break core focused Nomad 5 Daydream by Ghost of 3.13. Or March 13th? Probably March 13th. If you've ever played a Gorship map before, you know exactly what this kind of map is like. Very, very burst focused. Lots of very high, uh, very high beat snap reverse sliders or buzz sliders. Not a ton of aim requirement, but none of the bursts are sort of stacked. So you do have to continually flow aim every burst throughout the map. Uh, usually not including triples, but sometimes including triples. And this one at OD9 is going to be a challenge to act for a lot of players if you're not very strong on this BPM. Uh, if you don't have the control to hit burst after burst over and over again, uh, you are going to inevitably start beginning some bursts late or failing out on some bursts at the end of them. Like all the Rosh Pops are done. Shield, Riser, and Zane in for Taiwan. Haga, Aerith, and Iger in for Japan.
early, early miss from Haga. Applying the Apraxia method to this map. else still holding on to the combo. No, Aerith finding a break as I say that. 99.8 for Zane and Riser. Double S for a shield. Uh, some kind of ridiculous accuracy for Taiwan. Zane finally fumbles on one of the aim patterns, but so do Iger and Haga, and that means that the combos are fully reset for Japan at this point. Taiwan with a massive combo lead going into the break here. Yeah, a halfway point of the map in shield. Still holding the SS for Taiwan right now. Zane once again, but it doesn't really matter so much when Shield and Riser are still holding the double full combo. Iger finds a break as well on the side of Team Japan, and this map is essentially over and done with. It's just a question of will Shield SS, especially with Haga finding another break there for Japan. He finally drops two 100s at the very end of the map, but man, that is uh, that is a hell of a score from Shield once again. Riser as well with what is that five 100s? No, four 100s and one miss is what that is. So very very strong scores from the both of them. The two 100 FC from Shield. Uh, definitely the standout, but Riser with only one miss and four 100s is uh, also a little bit nuts on the accuracy. Overall, very strong from Taiwan as well. Zane only with the two misses, 1200s in the middle of the map. And uh, higher score than two out of three players for Japan, so still a very strong score out of him as well. It's just the rest of his team. Um, very, very strong on that pick. Waiting on the next pick now from Japan, down five to three. They do still have the chance to win this, uh, but it is gonna be a little bit tough. Double time four for Japan as the next pick. I'm a little... A 
little interested to see how this one turns out. It's been the speed train for Taiwan the entire way through this match, and now Japan going with a double-time pick of their own. This map is AR 8.7, so still AR 10.1, a little bit high AR, uh, and it is 179 BPM no mod, so 268 BPM on double time. 269 BPM non double time is 268.5. Fairly long double time pick as well. I assume they are just wanting Haga to FC this for the side of Japan and hoping that Taiwan does not pull out the kind of scores that they just did on Nomad 5. It is going to be Delis, Hyphen, and Haga in for this one. So we decided Japan making their last stand. This is the final pick coming out from that team before they try to take away the breakpoint from Taiwan to force the tiebreaker. Taiwan hoping to just end it here, not even have to go on for their last pick. They're putting in Riser, Dazzlewind, and GFMRT to try and make that happen. Good luck, have funds are out, and we are into the final pick for Team Japan. Base drop freaks in double time. Yeah, I would assume the earthquakes are completely over at this point. It does not seem that any of them happened after the magnitude 6.2 earthquake. Uh, so I'm assuming they're not going to have to deal with that anymore for the side of Team Taiwan. It has been uh, about 30 minutes or so since the last one. I don't think we'll be seeing any others. No drops on the combo yet from either team. Accuracy pretty much dead even as well. That's why that score is just barely over on either side for either team. GFMRT finds a slider break at about the halfway point. That's actually a really big combo break with everyone still holding the FC from both teams. And into the next drop section, into the next first heavy section, Dazzlewind finds a missing on one of the jumps as well, and the slide break on one of the slider streams after the jumps as well. It's just Riser now holding on for Taiwan, but Japan holding the three-way FC, and a very, very strong pick from them by the looks of the map at the halfway point. Haga, by the way, with 99% accuracy, higher act than Riser right now over on Taiwan's side. So even if the breaks come through for Delis and Hyphen, you've still got this massive combo, the massive accuracy as well from Haga to go along with it. And this is just looking to be a super dominant pick from Japan. Haga finds a slider break actually. Delis though still holding on to the full combo from Japan and the 400k score lead is going to be too much for a comeback to happen on the side of Taiwan anyway. That is going to be a successful pick for them and they will force out the last pick from Taiwan. 5-4 to four here. They do still have to win a break point to get it to tiebreaker but they have made it to the final pick.
And keep in mind, Taiwan is the first seed out of qualifiers. Japan, the ninth seed from qualifiers. So this is a, a definitely a matchup that you do not expect, I think, to be this close on paper. Just looking at qualifier results and how both of their matches went last weekend. Uh, but this is a very, very close match between the two teams. Japan with only still one break point given away from the very start of the match. If they can earn it back here, they will be able to take the win against the first seed. Or they will at least be able to force the tiebreaker, excuse me, against the first seed in the tournament. And uh, something that's a little bit funny, Japan has won both of the double time picks that were high approach rate, but has lost all of the other speed picks. They lost on Noblesse Gloria, Glorious Crown, and Ghost of 3.13, but they were able to win on both Cleone no Akari and on Base Drop Freaks. With the final double time pick being AR8, that might actually bode fairly well for Taiwan if they do just want to lean into, yeah, we're better than, on speed than you in general. We're going to go with that last double time pick. You do have to start questioning a little bit for Taiwan if that is the right move when you have sort of coin flip some of these speed picks. Uh, you know, some of them like uh, Daydream have been very, very one-sided with the 2-100 from Shield and 4-100 from Riser, uh, but this pick, definitely the other way around. It's gonna be Hard Rock 1, the last pick. They don't go with the final speed map, they go with Hard Rock Aim Consistency to end it off here as their final pick. This map 6.64 stars, 196 BPM, CS 5.2, and 4 minutes of hard rock aim consistency. And this is honestly, a, I think, a little bit of an interesting pick from Taiwan. Japan has their backs against the wall in this one, and you could maybe think about picking a map that is susceptible to nerves impacting it in a very meaningful way. Uh, if there is any sort of map where that is definitely the case, it is something like inconsistency. And especially if you buff that circle size with Hard Rock, it's going to be really tough to control the aim with nerves. Seen teams use that strategy before, just save an aim map for last when they're up a point, and Taiwan is doing that here, whether by design or just by having good scores on the map. But Riser, Flask, and one more, Zane, going to be coming in for Taiwan to round out the roster to try and close out 6-4 against Japan. They'll field Iger, Hyphen, and Aerith to try and force the tiebreaker against the number one seed in the tournament. And regardless of how this map turns out, it has been a phenomenal performance from Japan. I think any team in the loser's bracket is going to be scared of going up against somebody who took four points at least off of the number one seed in the tournament. It may only be round of 16, but these were very, very similar pools in difficulty to the qualifiers pool. And I think Japan is going to have a very interesting run in the loser's bracket if they do get knocked out here. Like good luck have funds are out everybody ready to go so we are getting into the final pick this is taiwan's last pick against japan
Everybody's still holding on to the combo at the moment. Better accuracy over on the side of Taiwan, but that really does not matter all that much in a map like this. It is just, can you aim? And right now, everyone can. We are heading into the first Ki, though, the first hard part of the map. There's a break from Aerith on one of the Awkward Aim 1-2 jumps in the bottom section of the map. Iger as well finding a break in the first Ki. It is still three FCs coming through for Taiwan right now. And Hyphen resets as well for the side of Japan. That is a three-way reset a third of the way through the map. And massive combo lead over to Taiwan. Who are able to hold on through the raw aim parts of the map. Aerith finding another break on uh, one of the streams right after the first Ki time. Iger as well finding another break. Riser does full miss that stream, but Flask and Zane are still holding on to full combos. Don't believe the A rank. That's an FC. He just has bad act. He is uh, still holding on to the exact same combo, actually, as Zane with the 98%. So those two full combos from Flask and Zane are doing a lot of work right now for Taiwan with the full reset from Japan. And honestly, they have to break soon if Japan wants a chance in coming back here. Hyphen has very good accuracy, very good score as well, but it's just not comparable to either of these full combos coming out of Taiwan at the moment. At this point, it is a 500k almost score lead. Aerith really having a tough time with this one, finding another break. And there's only so much that these scores from Japan can do at this point. Blast finally breaks. Uh, was holding not great accuracy the whole time as well, so the score in general is not going to be very high from him at the end of the map. Uh, but Zane is still holding on to this full combo. Iger can only match the combo coming out of Riser and with worse accuracy to boot. Uh, hyphen, the highest score on the side of Japan, cannot match any of the scores coming out of Taiwan still. And this is looking to be a win across the board for Taiwan in terms of score. Zane does finally find a miss. If Iger, if there's a three-way from Taiwan, maybe, but at this point it is 500, 600k in the favor of Taiwan. And that is going to be the match. There is just not enough map left for Japan to come back. So despite a very solid effort in the combo recovery from Japan, those early breaks in the first Ki are going to doom them to the loser's bracket run. GG well played. They put up a fantastic performance versus Taiwan, honestly. Um, if you told me Seed 1 versus Seed 9 was going to be this close, I would not have believed you looking at the matchup on paper. Uh, but this was a very, very tough match for Taiwan, actually, facing a, facing a challenge here in the round of 16 versus Japan. Taiwan is going to be moving on to the winner's semifinals after this quarterfinals matchup versus Japan. We'll go ahead and take a quick look at the bracket here. Taiwan moving on to face the winner of Brazil versus Germany in the winner's quarterfinals. That matchup happening later today. And Japan is going to be facing off against the winner of France versus Canada in the loser's bracket. Poland versus Countryless is actually our next matchup, and we are going to be switching over to that one. Once again, congratulations to Taiwan for winning that matchup. A tough matchup versus Japan, who honestly I think is going to have uh, a very interesting loser's bracket run now with that kind of showing versus the top seed in the tournament. Poland versus Countryless is going to be starting up soon. You're going to switch over to that one. I'm going to grab something to drink so that my voice does not give out during the middle of the stream. And we will see you back here shortly.